Hi, everybody uh, from a sunny day in Brooklyn, New York. Before we start, we do want to announce Rishi Ekram as track four raffle winner. And remember, Career Village is doing resume reviews and mock interviews to so stop in over the sessions area to learn more. We want to thank our sponsors for making this conference possible. Microsoft, MongoDB, Salesforce, eLearning Security, Verizon, and Amazon. Thank you all for attending today's talk. Uh, I'm so happy to have the chance to introduce Brianne. Brianne is an AppSec engineer who lives in Oakland, California. She made the leap from site reliability engineer to application security engineer late last year. Fun fact, there's probably gonna be a cat by her feet while she does this talk. Uh, <laughs> please make sure to ask any questions in the stage chat so that the speaker can answer it during Q&A. Great, thank you so much. Uh, hello, my name is Brianne and I am so incredibly excited to be presenting at the Diana Initiative. Um, talking about the last few years of my career. I'm hoping that something in it can help you get closer to achieving your dreams in security. I'll give you a spoiler of my last point. Uh, we need you, like you specifically are needed, I promise you. And my hope is that by the end of this talk, you'll have a better idea of why it is that we need you and how you can get there. Um, so I've been an application security engineer at Salesforce for nine months now. Uh, Salesforce, if you are unaware, is more than just the naming rights buyer of some premier real estate in downtown San Francisco. Uh, they also make really popular customer relationship management software. Their security org has more than a thousand people and we do all kinds of work, um, vetting mergers and acquisitions, uh, traditional red team stuff, InfraSec among others. And then there's what my team does, which is reviewing third-party software that people within Salesforce want to use to ensure that it's safe to use within the company. There are lots of different kinds of folks in that big security organization, and I work with a lot of really smart, lovely people. Next slide, please. That said, there are probably some people within that giant security org who identify positively with this image, which is what I found when I looked up scary black hoodie hacker. Next slide. I'm just not one of them. Uh, this is me at work at my last job. I live in Oakland, I love animals and crafts and computers, and the time I used to spend planning travel is now spent writing and reading even more than I used to. I'll go into some more depth in my, into my career in a minute, but the short version is that I was a writer for more than a decade and I got a certificate in UX in 2014. Then I went to code school the next year. My first engineering job was at a software consultancy with a focus on infrastructure and process. And I realized there that I loved ops work, so my next job was as an SRE. Then late last year, I moved to Salesforce for my current gig. But I realized shortly after I got that first engineering job that security was really interesting to me too. So it's been a quiet and very consistent theme as I got my bearings in more general engineering. Next slide, please. So like I said, I started my career in writing and editing, which is what I went to college for. And then to my great and enduring shock, I actually supported myself on it for a decade or so. But I realized after a while that I hated marketing and also that most writing that pays anything is marketing. I love teaching people, but I actually don't really like persuading them to do things they're not already interested in. Around the same time, I also realized I was being priced out of Seattle where I'd lived for that entire time. I tried to find something more lasting and lucrative, which included getting into content strategy and getting that UX certificate at the University of Washington, but it still didn't get me to where I wanted to be. But still, I picked up some skills that ended up being really useful later. And those skills were largely around learning to understand things, then learning to teach those things to other people, writing documentation, and uh, learning to navigate people in teams, including in hard conversations. Um, programming languages come and go, but this stuff has been consistent in every job I've had in tech. Next slide, please. I landed in San Francisco in 2015 to go to code school, and I stayed when I got my first job. I was a consultant for three years and I did a lot of work in healthcare and gov tech. I was thrown in the deep end as an infrastructure engineer and essentially as a sysadmin, um, but I also spent six months as a full stack engineer during that time. So the lasting useful skills I picked up from this role included networking, AWS and Terraform, Bash, writing CLI tools and the joy of automation, the importance of team structure, uh, including good meetings and retros and blameless culture, Navigating bureaucratic nightmares, which while not always fun, is, I'm sorry to say, endlessly useful. Being very diplomatic while being also very clear. And learning that I don't like writing JavaScript that much. And all of this led directly to my next role. Next slide, please. 
I spent 13 months as an SRE and it was a job I was thrilled to get and I'm still thrilled that I landed. I got to dig deeper into all of the skills from my previous job as well as spending long days with Elasticsearch, becoming sort of friends with Ansible and learning another flavor of Linux. To my surprise, early last fall, a friend reached out saying that her team at Salesforce wanted someone with an SRE background and an interest in really learning security. We'd gone to the same coding school, but not at the same time. And we actually knew each other from a WISP event. She placed first in the handcuff escape competition. I placed second and we stayed in touch. And so as of mid-December last year, I became an application security engineer. Next slide, please. As I said, uh, my team does vendor reviews, which can involve black box penetration, te penetration testing, meaning that we don't see the code, uh, code reviews for internal tools or packages that can be available on the Salesforce app exchange, and consulting on responsible data use for teams planning projects. In the last few months, I've dug deep into Chrome extension reviews. I've learned about working out pen testing contracts with potential vendors, and I've written documentation to help non-engineers in the company interact with us in the easiest way possible. I get to learn constantly in an environment that really, really supports it. And I landed on the right team too. Uh, going back to one of my first points, we're a friendlier face of security, which is the only kind of security I'm really interested in being involved in. In addition to approving or denying potential vendors, we also sometimes work directly with those companies to offer advice to improve their security practices if they don't pass our initial review. So I also get the chance sometimes to help engineers be even better, which is one of my favorite things. So at this job, I love the part where I learn about how to do weird things with web requests and burp suite and learn about the strange world of Google permission scopes as they apply to Chrome extensions, which is a really good and strange world. But the thing that makes this job especially satisfying is helping people do the work they love in a safer way. I don't want to sell anything to anyone, like I said, but it turns out I do really like helping people who do like selling things to do their work more effectively without having to get a crash course in InfoSec. It genuinely makes me happy to refine a process or change wording on my team's intake form that spares people toil and misunderstanding. And it all adds to my general goal of being a non-scary security person who really just wants to make things better. Next slide, please. So that's the rundown of my career uh, up until basically yesterday. Uh, I wanted to be really specific about what got me here to where I am and wanted to walk through, uh, yeah, just want to walk through the uh, relevant skills because you might also have some skills that you've been undervaluing as they might apply to InfoSec and AppSec specifically. So there are things that ops and security have in common broadly, and I don't just mean a reputation for being risk averse and maybe more than a little curmudgeonly. Networking and AWS knowledge will always be helpful. Port hygiene is an evergreen subject and it's one that people still stumble on. Uh, being able to write in one or two programming languages is really helpful. My go-tos are Bash and Python, but I'm also learning Apex at my job, so there's always something new. Uh, being able to navigate, to comfortably navigate the command line is a massive asset, as are being able to look up running processes and change their state, logs and manipulating them, never unhelpful. So I don't use a ton of this actively in my current job, but it absolutely informs everything that I do. Knowing what's going on with some reasonable confidence on the back end when I'm working with the front end is really, really useful. Now, what I found more surprising, and Maybe someday I won't so much, but I motorcycle. But that time isn't here yet. Or what I'm gonna call my, my core skills because the term soft skills kind of grosses me out. And those are communication, including my ability to talk to people, but especially writing and documentation. And what I think of as a UX approach to this work is also incredibly useful. I'm still capable of doing a more formal UX exercise, but what I really mean here is coming into a situation with someone and assuming you don't understand their motivations, their previous actions, or their context, and then working deliberately to build those by asking questions. I've also heard this described as beginner's mind, but I like this. I, I like describing it more as a process. That you remember that even if someone is doing something that to you makes absolutely no sense, they most likely have really good, specific, valid reasons for doing it, and you can discover those by asking them. I do this weekly now. Uh, part of my job is having regular meetings with people who need to engage with my team and need a little more information before they get into our process. So in addition to helping them understand what part of our process they'll need to work through, I listen to where they're confused by our external documentation or when working through our forms caused more confusion than clarity. And then I go back to my team and we work out how to make it better for the next person. Next slide, please. So yeah. I went into the process with some incredibly useful existing knowledge, but let's talk about the good stuff. What exactly did I study to get this job? Next slide, please. 
To start, in order to not drown you in words, I'm going to describe the list of things I did rather than show you terrible wordy slides. But everything I refer to is in a blog post that is linked at the end of this talk. Uh, and I'm also linking it on my Twitter. So you can find anything useful you want there in the gobs of links I included. So for the interview, I had about two weeks to prepare in depth. I actually applied while I was out of town for three weeks, being uh, the maid of honor at my best friend's wedding. So I didn't get to do much until I was home and had slept for a couple of days and got my brain back online. And once my brain worked again, I made a wish list of everything I wanted to be able to talk confidently about. And then I prioritized it and began working through it. In the end, I touched on about half of it, but largely that just reflects that it was a really ambitious and kind of long list. I ended up studying for about a week and a half, a couple hours at a time, and I focused on three main things. Uh, Exorcism, which is a CLI tool that offers code challenges of different difficulties in 50 different programming languages. Um, if you want to learn to program in the language that the original uh, space explorers used, you can go and get up in some MIPS. I just mostly looked at Python and Bash, though. And I did this because I never feel like I program enough in my jobs. So I did this just for a little confidence boost. I also worked to get conversational in the OWASP top 10, which included reading the official OWASP cheat sheets, reading what other people had to say about the different vulnerabilities in both the 2013 and 2017 lists, and then describing them out loud to both my cats and my boyfriend, which incidentally is also how I prepare for talks. I also looked up as many blog posts as I could that combined the two disciplines. Um, anything that looked at back end and like uh, cloud infrastructure and that bumped up against breaches, I dug really hard into that. The Capital One breach was a dream for this because it was entirely an AWS IAM problem and I understand that stuff pretty well. Next slide, please. Well, let's talk about what the interview was like. My interview was a bit bespoke uh, because they are more accustomed to hiring people who are already pen testers and security researchers. However, in the months since I got the job, my manager has informed me that going a bit bespoke is fairly normal for the team. He also just really likes people with varied backgrounds, so that's not too surprising. Um, so I'm telling you a specialized experience to me, but it's also fairly representative of how we hire. So in the interview, in addition to proving that I knew a few things about spotting insecure code and talking through vulnerabilities, I also talked to one of the company's DevOps architects about ops things. I talked about securing a server when several different types of users would need to reach it in different ways. And yes, I absolutely talked about the OWASP top 10. My bar, for a good excuse me. <laughs> My bar for a good interview is whether the things that we talked about or did were directly relevant to the needs and responsibilities of the job. And that was absolutely the case here. The only whiteboarding I did uh, was when I volunteered to do so. I hopped up and just started drawing out network diagrams because I realized that my hand gestures were not up to the complexity of the subject. Next slide. But here's something I only realized afterward, which I alluded to earlier. I'd actually done a lot of security learning since becoming an engineer. I just didn't fully realize what I'd been doing because I thought I was just having fun. These are the things that I did that ended up being really helpful when it came time to prepare officially for a security interview. Uh, I had gone to DEF CON four times. Would have really liked for it to have been five times at this point, but I'll see you in 2021. I went to Day of Security three times. I got to be a beta student for a friend's security education startup and did an eight part course all about writing secure code. Thank you again, Gold Hat Security. I attempted CTFs. Um, I still don't consider myself great at these, but I continue to do this. I made a point of talking security with all of my ops coworkers because they all have opinions and stories. I volunteered for AWS IAM work whenever it came up as a task. That's identity and access management, and it has everything to do with how you set up users with just enough access. I took classes in computer architecture and networking at the Bradfield School of Computer Science. Uh, they're San Francisco based, but went online just before the plague hit. They're great. I strongly recommend getting a, an employer to pay for it if you can. And I also continued to meet people um, and then keeping in touch and showing up at events. Day of Security, OWASP, all of these meetups are so good. And all of them are online now. I've been going to OWASP New York meetups, which are great too. Even in this online life, even in this new online life, there's networking to be had and it's incredibly helpful. Next slide. So this slide is about just describing to you, um, sorry, where I am with my job right now. This is where I'm still concentrating my efforts at work. And I add it because you might have some skills in here that you might be undervaluing that I would like to assure you are incredibly useful. 
so I had, as I mentioned, I had the good luck to take a friend's secure, co secure coding course, which meant I was able to say some useful things in my interview about code evaluation, often in the vein of like, oh, it looks like that text input goes directly into the SQL query with no sanitation. You hate to see that. But it's still a skill that I'm trying to mature. Same with Burp Suite. I took a half day workshop in it at Day of Security a couple of years ago, but it is an enormous tool. So I'm still trying to deepen my knowledge in it. And I do still lead with my writing skills when applying for a job, but writing reports for vendors is a really specific skill that I'm still learning more about. Generally though, um, I look back at my wish list of things I wanted to spend time on in the years before I got this job or even knew it was a possibility. CTFs, the OWASP juice shop project, burp tutorials, all sorts of things like that. And it's confirmation that I was on the right track of what I needed to learn if I wanted to do this work. I had enough placeholder experience to get through the door, but I still wanna know more about all of these things. If you have any of these skills, may I tell you, you are needed. And if you don't have these skills yet, may I tell you, you can get them. There are a lot of free resources online and they're waiting for you. Next slide. So I wanna leave you with some more general advice if you're looking to make a jump like this. First, find a couple of security essential skills that you already know something about and dive really deeply into them. I have a lot to say about IAM stuff in AWS, in Jenkins, when it comes to general principle of least privilege things. Uh, find your skill like that, work to get conversational, keep up on new stories related to those skills. This part shouldn't be hard because the skill that you pick should be interesting to you. Then while you're doing this learning, make sure the people in your professional life know what you're trying to do. This can be your manager if you have a good kind of open relationship, but it can also be online communities. It can be Twitter. It can be coworkers that you keep in touch with as you all move companies. Basically anyone that you can speak computer security with. Then build that community by going to meetups and workshops. Go to the thing, learn the thing, read about the thing after, and then keep in touch. Incidentally, volunteering is amazing for this. It supercharges both the learning and the people that you get to know. And then finally, and this is what I really want to leave you with. Remember that security needs you. Like all of tech, security is better when there are lots of different kinds of people working out how to make things better and fix things. Please hang in there and keep trying. Next slide. And thank you very much. I would love to take any questions people have. Thank you so much, Brianne, for sharing your story and these great takeaways for all of us. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can definitely ask it in the stage chat. Brian, we have a question about the technology that you are just kind of adding to your skill set. Um, you mentioned JavaScript and that you wanted to learn more. Um, what are you doing right now to kind of learn it and why JavaScript over some other languages? Sure. Um, to try to learn it, I've been making a point of trying to read more of it. Um, also, my company has a lot of internal education um, and I took a two-day JavaScript course earlier this year, which was super helpful. Um, yeah, mostly it's just immersing myself in it and honestly reading code is a whole lot of it. And the biggest part of why I wanna focus on it is that just looking at front end things, it is constantly there. And also when I do have to review possible app exchange packages that will be available within uh, different Salesforce orgs, there's always a JavaScript component. It basically just pops up in almost everything that I do. Uh, like I said, I've focused a lot on Chrome extensions. I'm actually doing a talk about that uh, tomorrow at a different event. And JavaScript is just a really big component of it. So I've realized if I want to do this job well, I need to stop worrying and love the JavaScript. Awesome. Um, we have a question about uh, volunteering. What type of volunteering did you do? I know you mentioned different meetup events. Um, so maybe some thoughts about that. Yeah. Uh, it's funny to talk about now. Um, but like I did volunteer at B-Side San Francisco just before everything closed down. It was in early March. So it was a lot of like awkwardly waving from a distance. 
Um, but yeah, I got to know a ton of people doing that and then just otherwise go to the event. Um, I did even more of this when I was in content strategy before. Just people are really, really impressed if you just show up and are helpful and generally competent. Like even if you're not demonstrating tech skills, it really just gives you a lot of credibility. So yeah, this year it's only been beside San Francisco, but um, yeah, I'm just going to make a, especially since uh, conferences are popping back up again. Basically, if you can do even, you know, something like this, you'll do great. Great. Um, some other questions are around uh, what online resources have you used and maybe thoughts about certification. Um, general just advice for someone maybe that's transitioning into an app sec role or just entering cyber uh, security. Sure. My opinions about certificates might be a little interesting because I do come from an ops background, which in my experience, they tend to be the people in engineering who have the who just tend to have a little less formal education. Like I find it to be really normal that someone will be like, oh yeah, I took some C courses in community college when I was like 20 and then I got hired in, at an ISP and now I do DevOps. Like there's a lot of just learning on the job. So, I mean, if a certification will give you the confidence and the skills you wanna have, I think that's great. Like that's why I've considered them um, usually in the context of will my job pay for this? Uh, but for other resources, I've just been seeing a lot of great things pop up like three or four years ago, I just don't think that there were as many of these things, but uh, things that I've used uh, for training for this job in particular, uh, the OWASP Juice Shop project, it's just a little vulnerable web server that you host locally. It is amazing. Like I actually did it as my job for two weeks to get a little more confidence with pen testing. I'm so impressed by it. And it's something that I actually want to contribute to at some point, just because I've gotten so much from it. Great, that's definitely a great resource to know of. Um, we're just getting a lot of thanks on your talk. Uh, if you have any final questions, we might have room for one more. Uh, I do see one here. How important is automation in AppSec? Any particular vulnerability scanning tools reporting that you might um, have thoughts about? Yeah, I can tell you what, what I use. Um, we do lean really heavily on Burp. Uh, part of it is, you know, looking at requests and repeating them and altering them, but also just their general like wider scan. I usually start a project with a passive scan and then wait until I'm done to do, oh, I can't think of specifically what it's called in the tool right now, but I think of it as the very final scan uh, because if you use it, you might leave the website unusable. So you don't wanna do it when you're still actively looking at things. Uh, we also use check marks just for scanning code. Um, but I found that people really have varying opinions about this. I like check marks because it finds things like a lack of a permissions check, which is a really big deal with some of the code that we look at. Like is someone allowed to look at this field of the object? Um, is someone allowed to delete or change or create this object? And a, an automated tool is really good for finding that just because it's looking for, you know, is there an if statement, like if object dot is creatable. So it's pretty easy for a machine to do it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so just a few more thanks here. Um, we have one final question, which is uh, which OWASP app did you mention? Was it Zap? No, not Zap. I've never used it. Um, not yet, I should say. It's been on my radar. No, the only OWASP thing I mentioned was just the, the Juice Shop app just for finding vulnerabilities. Great. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing your story again with us. Um, everyone, hope you have a great rest of the conference. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great.